Siri, call Cory Beach. Calling Cory Beach. Home. Beach Nuggets, what's up? What's up, bud? Just working on some ideas for the truck. Did you have a good weekend? I did. How busy are you on a scale of one to two? Uh, I'm gonna go with about a nine. I uh, just gotta cut a crunch time. Gotta try to get this thing done. Got it. Well, you wanna come over and shoot this dual shield flux core video with me? Cause I need some beach nuggets to lay some beads. And then also help the camera work. Yeah, dude, if you can give me a few hours, um, I'll finish what I'm doing here and uh, head on over. All right. Sounds good. See you in a little bit. All right, buddy. Adios. Is Corey going over? Uh, yeah, but he said like two hours. Yellow piece, yellow piece. Oh, yeah. Get low when the whistle go. What's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. Thanks for coming and visiting me again. And I have a special guest. I have Beach Nuggets in the house. And you can find them on Instagram at, what is it? Seabeach34. Seabeach34, I always forget it, but now you know what it is. Right there. <laughs> in this video, what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be covering everything flux core arc welding. And I mean everything flux core arc welding. And flux core arc welding, it's one of the main four processes out there. And what are they again? GTAW. Gas tungsten arc welding. SMAW. Stick metal arc welding. GMAW. Gas metal arc welding. And FCAW. Yeah, which is what we're doing now. So yep. flux, car arc, flux core arc welding. So you got four main processes and your favorite is what? TIG welding. He likes TIG welding. For any reason in particular? I just like practicing and trying to get it right. He likes making his balls look bad. <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite's uh, stick welding. Um, so it should be an interesting video. Yeah. But you're all ready to go with your uh, bald hat on and all your clothes, hey, and so am I. Gotta stay warm out here, it's Michigan. Yep, it's your breath. <laughs> what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be welding with 035 self shield of flux core. We're gonna be welding with 045 all position flux core. And then we're gonna be welding with 045 all position stainless flux core. We're gonna be doing some stringers, to show you some arcs. Then we're gonna be doing some groove welds with some backer strips. This guy is. Yeah. And we're gonna be doing it with two different gas components. 7525 and 100% CO2, all on a Trans Steel 2200. We'll maybe show you 110 and 220 volts so you get an understanding of it, but that's what we're gonna be doing. You ready? Let's do it. Let's go. Let's get this kicked off with some 035 71T-11. It's an all position self-shielded flux core. So make sure your ground is on positive and your torch leads on negative. On the Trans Steel 2200, we're gonna go down to self-shielded flux core on the left side. Then we're going to choose 035. On 110 power, our maximum wire feed speed is 280 inches a minute at 22.1 volts. We're going to run 035 self shielded flux core on 110. So, running self shielded flux core, I'm going to get it about a 20 to 25 degree drag angle. And the purpose of running stringers is just to get used to it. I'm going to show you guys how I get comfortable to start a longer weld. So if I have, say, a six inch coupon here, I'm gonna get in a position where I'm stable, yet I can still slide to make the whole joint continuously. When you start your stringer bead, you wanna pay attention to travel speed. And that is the distance to complete the stringer on the plate. So the faster the speed, the more narrow the bead will get, the slower, the wider. We just ran our first pass here with the self-shielded flux core on 110, running about 280 inches a minute at 17 volts. So the benefits to self-shielded flux core would be one, I don't need gas. Because it is self-shielded with the powder inside, I can go outside, I don't have to worry about wind, I don't have to worry about mill scale, I don't have to worry about rusty parts, stuff like that. So we'll take and bust a slag off of this and see how it looks. I'm gonna knock the slag off using a steel brush. So we'll get it nice and clean here and we'll run a second stringer pass.
Here we got our first pass laid down for the stringer. Um, these are different than running a weld joint because in a weld joint, I would be more say like this versus on a stringer, I'm gonna stand it up a little taller and I'm either gonna be on the toe of the first weld or maybe about a wire diameter off depending on how wide I want the stack. Um, and again, just get comfortable and drag it across. We're gonna run our second stringer pass and we're gonna show you a cause and effect of traveling too slow or getting too close to that first pass. But if you notice the weld puddle's overlapping the first one. On the second one, we're gonna move a little bit farther away on the toe and we're gonna increase our speed. You can see the weld puddle's nicking right at the toe. That's what you're looking for. Corey's gonna finish these out and at home, you'll wanna practice and do layers like this. And next up is an 80,000 slap joint in the flat position, all on one ten power. So here we got the lap joint set up and I'm gonna show you guys wire position, torch position for a lap joint versus the stringer. So previously with a stringer, I was like this. Now with a joint, I'm gonna rock back a little bit, keep my angle here, and this angle is way more critical to burn into this joint. So as I'm welding across, I wanna keep that wire in the joint or maybe a wire diameter off, depending. And again, I wanna stay stable enough to where I can slide, but not get all wobbly. We got some 80 thousandths material here. Um, I got the machine set right at about 100 inches a minute at about 15.7 volts. Um, we're gonna run this, see what our thickness limitations are, and I'll get it tacked up, see where we're sitting. We found it was best to run a three quarter inch contact tip to work distance with a 15 degree drag angle for 80 thousandths plate with self shielded flux core. Now you don't want to exaggerate that work angle or specifically that contact tip to work distance. Towards the end of this weld joint, Corey starts increasing beyond three quarter inch contact tip to work distance. And towards the end it becomes really ropey and you'll see it in the shot of the weld after he's done. We ran our first pass here on this 80 thousandths lap joint with the self-shielded flux core. We're just going to clean it up real quick, see what we got. So here we got it cleaned up um, on 80 thousandths. It actually ran pretty good. So we'll take a look at the backside, see what we did. That's a real nice weld. Next up is a quarter inch T-joint in the horizontal position on 110 power. Here we have a T-joint set up so I can show you again wire placement and torch position for a T-joint. So a stringer, I can't get up here on a T-joint. So I'm gonna be again in the joint, a little bit longer stick out so I can kind of see what's going on and stable enough to where I can run it all the way across without getting out of the joint or riding too high. We got quarter inch here. I'm gonna run a horizontal T-joint with the self-shielded flux core on 110 and see what the max of my machine can do. Since we are running the Transil 2200 maxed out on 110 volt, which is around 280 inches a minute, I suggest increasing your contact tip to work distance somewhere about one inch. So one inch gave the puddle the fluidity we were looking for on the top and bottom plate. And uh, if you look at the amperage control too with that stick out, the amps stay within about four amps. So I just ran this quarter inch plate at 280 inches a minute. Let's see if this 110's got enough power to kick it in. Let's weld some quarter inch T-joints in the horizontal position, but on 230 volt power. We got a quarter inch plate. Again, we're gonna run it on the 230 volt. I'm at 400 inches a minute and 20 volts. Let's see how it works. Right away, you can tell we're getting the horsepower now. 
and basically because we're on 230 volt power on the Transil 2200, which opens the machine up to allowing us to be at 400 inches per minute at about 19 to 20 volts. And amperage wise, we're about 200 amps. The puddle's really fluid and it's wetting in the sidewall really well. We're still running that uh, one inch contact hip of work distance and 15 degree drag angle. We got done running the quarter inch at 400 inches a minute on the 220 volt. Let's clean it up, see how it looks. Let's take that same quarter inch plate and run it out of position in a 3F, but on 110 power. So we're gonna run self-shielded flux core in the vertical up position. Uh, cool thing about this is with self-shielded flux core, it freezes faster, so gravity has less of an effect on your weld as, say, in solid wire. So what I'm going to be doing is wire in the joint, up, and I'm going to be dragging it like this, up. Typically, anytime you're running out of position, you have to fight gravity. So I always take my settings and I drop them about 30 to 40% less than like a flat or horizontal position. So we're about 245 inches a minute at 16.5 volts, where if you remember on the 230 volt horizontal fillet weld, we're 400 inches a minute at 19 volts. And now we're somewhere around 140 amps versus 200. Let's go ahead and scrape it and see what we got. Let's try out some 308 self-shielded flux core, and we're going to do a lap joint quarter inch. Scrolling online, there is a thing called self-shielded flux core, but for stainless steel. We found this in 035 wire diameter, and looking at the wire specifications, you don't run this in electrode negative like standard mild steel self-shielded. You run this in electrode positive, so you got to make sure you switch this around, and... Um, you're not going to use any gas on this because it is a gasless self-shielded flux core, hence the word self-shielded. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a lap joint and you're going to use all the same technique as before. Let's give it a whirl. We're running around a 5 8 contact tip to work distance. And you notice there's not a lot of spatter coming off this compared to conventional self-shielded wire. And we're running about 320 inches a minute at 21.5 volts, which is somewhere around 110 amps, depending on your contact tip to work distance. But I'm pretty impressed with this for self-shielded stainless. This is the first time I welded with self-shielded stainless, and I can't wait to chip this thing. Keep in mind, based on the spec or the wire specification, it is a flat and horizontal only, so don't try any vertical up. I'm not going to, but let's go ahead and Let's try a quarter inch T joint in the horizontal position on one ten power. Let's step it up a notch and do this quarter inch horizontal fillet weld with self-shielded stainless. I'm gonna do the same position, drag, but we are increasing the wire feed speed to 320 inches a minute, which is around 17.5 volts. Now keep in mind, when you're using this wire, you can weld 300 series stainless, but also some 400 series stainless. I kept my contact tip to work distance the same as the flat lap joint in the prior weld test. And we're running about a 15 degree uh, drag angle at 245 inches a minute at 20.6 volts. And keep in mind this is on 110 volt in the self-shielded program, but in electrode positive on the Transil 2200. Go ahead and knock this uh, flux off the quarter inch stainless steel.
welds surprisingly good for a self seal of flux core on stainless. If I was going to be doing any portable work, especially 300 or 400 series stainless, I'd definitely be looking at this wire.